Okay, welcome back everyone. We're going to be focusing on the integumentary system. We're going to be looking at the skin. So when we look at the skin, we'll see the upper layer, the upper portion from here to here is the epidermis. And then a little bit deeper, we have the dermis. And the dermis has two layers. It has the superficial 20% portion, which is the papillary layer. And then we have this deeper 80% portion called the reticular layer. And then the third layer is the deepest, which is the hypodermis. You have epidermis on top, dermis, and then the hypodermis. And the reason why we do the skin is like the very first uh, system or the integumentary system is the very first system. It's because skin is made up of all four types of tissues. There's epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle, and nerve. So within the epidermis, we have lots of epithelium there. In the dermis, we've got some epithelium, we have some connective tissue, and we have muscle tissue, and we have nerve tissue. And in the hypodermis, we have connective tissue, we got blood vessels, we have connective tissue, we have fat. Uh, so we have all four types of tissues Okay. When we look at the epidermis, this top portion here under a microscope, it shows up as uh, five layers if we're looking at uh, areas that have thicker skin. Okay. Thicker skin is going to have five layers. If it's thin skin, there's only going to be four layers. And it's this lucidum that makes up the fifth layer. Okay, if we don't have lucidum, it's four layers, and it's going to be uh, parts of the body that have thinner skin. So thick skin is found, let's say, the palm of the hand, soles of the foot. So the first layer, which is going from here to here, right, look at that. It's stratified squamous epithelium. It's like 25 to 30 layers of stratified squamous epithelium. So it's the stratum corneum. Then deep to that, right here, we have this layer in here called the stratum lucidum. It's lucid. It's a little bit more clear under a microscope. Then we have a granular layer called the stratum granulosum. That's this layer here. It's granular. Then we have a spiny layer, which is a little bit deeper to that, stratum spinosum. And then we have the deepest layer, which is right in here. That deepest part is called the stratum germinativum or the stratum basal layer. They're interchangeable terms. Either stratum basal, you've heard of basal cell carcinoma, or stratum germinativum. This is where you have your stem cells. So the cells in the stratum uh, basal or stratum germinativum they multiply and divide, and then they push their way upward. And it takes about four weeks for those cells to go from the bottom layer, and they push all the way to the top until they slough off. And then you make new ones, and then it pushes up again. It takes about four weeks to get there, and then they slough off. So uh, easy little mnemonic for that is uh, share, loves getting skin Botox, Cher loves getting skin Botox. Cher has been pretty open in her life uh, about having plastic surgery and Botox. Um, she really has a very, very youthful uh, looking face. So Cher loves getting skin Botox. That's from superficial to deep. And then after the basal layer, now you have the dermis down below. And we have these hills called dermal papilla. And these dermal papilla are really involved in giving you your fingerprints, those dermal papilla. So this has shown up in the past. Again, just drag and drop. So we have share, loves, getting, skin, Botox, and then that's the epidermis. And then below that, from here to here, is the dermis. Okay. 
So what is the highlighted section up on top? That's going to be the epidermis. What do we have below it? That's going to be the dermis. And what do we have below that? That's going to be the hypodermis. So again, we have epidermis, dermis, hypodermis. Epidermis, dermis, hypodermis. Now they want you to uh, label the arrow. Sometimes there's arrows. Sometimes there's a color that's a little bit different than the rest of them. So this top layer from here to here, that's going to be the stratum corneum, simple uh, stratified squamous epithelium. So this is the stratum corneum, that's share. Then we have stratum lucidum. Then you have the stratum granulosum, right? So this one is the stratum lucidum. Then we have all the way at the bottom, what's this yellow highlighted region? That's going to be the germinatavum or the basal layer. And we don't see germinatavum. We have the stratum basal instead. Okay, now we have these hills. Those hills are the papilla. That's in the dermis, so those are called dermal papilla. Okay, um, now let's look at the nails, right? Skin, hair, and nails. So the nails, we have this uh, portion here, which is known as the free edge. That's what you clip and cut. Then we have the nail body. This section here should look a little bit pinkish. If it's not and it's white, then it's usually indicative of an anemia. Then we have the lunula, then we have the cuticle, and then we have the nail root. And right behind the nail root is the matrix. Uh, the matrix would be like uh, where you have stem cells, kind of like the stratum basal, where those stem cells multiply and divide and push the skin up. This is gonna push the nail forward in a similar manner. So on another cross section, if we're looking at the finger from the side view, right here's the distal phalange, that's the bone. So here we have the free edge of the nail. Then we have the nail body that should look a little bit pinkish. Um, the nail body. And then we have the lunula, which is much lighter in color. Then you have the cuticle back here. And then we have the nail root. And posterior to that, that's where we have the nail matrix. That's proximal to the nail root, and it contains those stem cells, those dividing cells that produce new, new nail cells, and it's going to push the nail forward in this direction. Okay? So right here, that's going to be the nail body. And then right back here, that's going to be the nail root. And the nails are really important. Um, it's part of my examination, my physical exam. Whenever I'm looking at my patients, I shake their hand and I feel the strength of their hand and the temperature of their hand. And then I turn it over and I look at the shape and the color of the nails. It tells you a lot of what's happening metabolically. Even in advanced uh, lung cancer, and also we'll see with um, irritable bowel disease, we'll see something called clubbing of the nails where the nails become a little bit thick and they round downward like that. Very thick in cuticle as well. If we have any type of COPD or lung disease or decreased oxygenation or advanced lung cancer, we see clubbing. And even with uh, intestinal disorders, we'll see uh, clubbing of the nails. Kind of looks like this in a real picture. So it's sometimes seen with low oxygenation. That's why it's seen with COPD, like emphysema. Uh, we see it with uh, inflammatory, uh, inflammatory bowel disease. We'll see it with AIDS as well, or even severe. Uh, liver disease. So this is like a normal nail. This is clubbing. The cuticle becomes very thick and the nail arches downward. Different than spooning. 
Spooning is when it arcs and curves upward. We see that with more like fungal infections and severe diabetics, they have spooning of the nails. When we see the nail body that's not pink, but it looks white, we see that with anemia, whether it's an iron deficiency anemia or B12 deficiency anemia, we'll see this type of uh, paleness. Uh, when I see this, I'll often pull down the lower lid of the eyeball and look inside to see if it's pink or white. And I also look at the tongue to see if it's pink or white. So we see that with anemia, we see it with uh, congestive heart failure, liver disease, or even with poor nutrition. I've even seen this in several patients over the years. This is uh, associated with uh, skin cancer. Um, it's called subungual melanoma. It's a dangerous type of skin cancer, uh, often seen with people that have darker complexion, not just people with lighter complexion, but I found it in many, many uh, American Africans over the years. So you have to, don't ignore the nails when looking and part of a, a good, thorough uh, physical examination. We'll see these type of ridges, these beaded ridges, which looks like uh, wax of a candle that is dripping. I've seen this with uh, diabetics and thyroid disorders, and I've seen it with other endocrine orders, endocrine disorders like Addison's disease. And when I get into um, the endocrine system in another week, we'll talk a little bit about uh, Addison's. I've seen it with B vitamin de deficiency and even chronic stress. The nails are really important uh, to look at, very important.